Hi besties, this is uh, your girl Sophie here with Baby Day who is sleeping um, to talk about a romanticism or it being a romantic today. Um, it is the second day of uh, Asexual Awareness Week. We are also in the third week of LGBTQ History Month, so this is all very exciting. Um, I have a very close relation, relationship to aromanticism, uh, because my dear sweet husband, uh, we've kind of just discovered after 10 years of marriage and 14 years being together that he falls solidly within the, the arrow a spectrum or he's definitely a spec. Um, so I'd love to take today's daily topic uh, times between puzzles to chit chat with you about what that looks like for me um, as an allosexual person or somebody who has kind of traditional um, sexual attraction and romantic attraction uh, how it's like for me to be married to someone who is a romantic um, and asexual and so um, if you're new here then basically what I do is um, because it's so early it's about 11 a.m. where I am which means it's like 6 a.m. <laughs> uh, in America, which is, I guess, tends to be my uh, target audience for my sexwithsophie.com work. Um, you know, I just tend to pick a topic to chat about with you guys um, so that I can do my daily LinkedIn puzzles and have um, time for you to call in and chat with me about things. But again, since it's so early, that's why I try to pick a topic just to chat about. So. Today's discussion will be on aromanticism, but if any of these topics pique your interest, or if you want to talk about aromanticism, you know, give me a call. I'd love to, to know your opinions and what you're thinking. Um, some of these might seem a little contentious, but please know that I'm not a debater. I'm not here to try to argue with anyone or convince anybody of anything. I genuinely want to have... Um, conversations and understand and so so especially if you are aromantic or asexual um i hate to talk about people without those people so um yeah definitely feel free to leave a comment or call in uh to share your story because um that's really what this space and time is about but again since it's so early <laughs> i do understand it's probably just going to be me up here talking to the recording <laughs> for the time being so um, before we jump into our first uh, puzzle, which is cross climb, uh, I just want to say that uh, in general, the, the definition of aromanticism is just that you don't have a romantic attraction. You don't have the capacity for romantic attraction. It's as simple as that. So you're not a very <laughs> romantic person. Now, aromanticism is on the asexuality spectrum. And so to be asexual, we talked about, that was our topic yesterday, um, to be asexual is just to not have sexual attraction. So it's kind of simple, but that's really it. So let's jump into cross climb and then we will uh, talk about aromanticism a little further, especially from the context of um, my experiences with my arrow husband. Um, so I start with the puzzles that I like least and then move into the ones I like most. And again, feel free to interrupt me at any time with a comment or a call. Um, so cross climb, basically you have to kind of figure out what the trivia word is and they're, they're usually quite simple. So this is a drink that should be avoided by someone with a dairy allergy, it's probably gonna be milk. Uh, had a tumble, I'd say fell. A uh, pepper grinder, a mill. Occupy to capacity, probably fill. Um, something road, historic series of trade routes named after a textile supply that would be carried along those roads. So a silk road. Uh, yeah. So looks like we got everything right. So now we have to rearrange the words um, <laughs> into how they uh, change by letter so there we go now we can do the top and bottom words so the top and bottom rows are two opposites as far as states of health are 
concern, so sick and well. Again, this is not the most challenging puzzle. That's why I do it first, because I think the harder they get, the more I like them. So, you know, this took a little over a minute. It's not too crazy. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and set up the next one, Pinpoint. And um, again, it's my second least favorite. So my third favorite, I guess, of the LinkedIn puzzles that we get. There's four all together that uh, reset daily. Um, so my second thought on aromanticism is uh, just to kind of give you a, a, a idea of what that looks like in our household <laughs> or, or what it's looked like in our relationship. Um, now, my husband is what's called apotheromantic. And yesterday we talked about how asexuality has all these different um, nuances in the spectrum where again, you could be demisexual, where you are only sexually attracted to someone you have an emotional connection with, where you could be catosexual, where you were allosexual, but you've had some kind of trauma that has uh, led you to now be asexual. Um, so it's the same with uh, aromanticism. So you can be demi-romantic where you only have a romantic re attraction to someone after you have an emotional connection to them. Um, so it's a lot of the, the prefixes are very similar. Um, but what apotheromantic means, um, or apothosexual, it means that you are um, repulsed. You're repulsed by romance. So apotheromantic is my husband. He is like, he's... Uh, physically and like mentally like repulsed by romantic things and it's just who he is and how he is is how he's always been um so like pda he's not gonna do it um doesn't like to cuddle and the thing about it that's so crazy is that um he in his head he wants to be or he feels like he is in his mind <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain but like um he he always talks about like cuddling and oh when it's warm like he wants to get onesies with me and we you know it's like in his mind it's like oh this would be so fun and sweet to do um but when we get into bed at night like you know for years um he would actually make it a point to like put the dogs on the bed between us or or you know at one point he was even um getting up at night and going in another room and i was like no we're not mm -mm, no sir no so um you know then when we had our five-year-old like it was like almost like a relief to him that there was something to be in between us in bed it was kind of wild so like once i learned again oh the, he's got this um vi you know visceral repulsion to romantic attraction it, it just kind of clicked for me like, oh, wow, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So it's not something he chooses. Um, I think if he had it his way, he would be a very touchy-feely, um, you know, cuddly kind of person because that's how he, like, he likes to think of himself like a Baymax, warm, huggy kind of guy, but he's just not. And so, you know, it's one of those things where we've had to learn how to work around that in our relationship. But again, that's why... Um, we've kind of determined that he falls in that apotheromantic category where he's repulsed by romance. And so it's interesting um, because I'm a romance writer. <laughs> so as a, as an allosexual, I'm so romantic. And so, you know, it's interesting how we are a couple, but we, you know, we work how we work. And so that's my thoughts on that. We can move on to our next puzzle. If you have any questions or thoughts, please let me know. Uh, leave a comment or give me a call. Let me know your story if that's uh, similar to something you experienced or that you've seen before. Um, but yeah, let's move into pinpoint. This is um, where you have to kind of guess the theme between the words. So six. Uh, let's see. Five. I'm going to say three, like three letter words or something. Rue, six rue. I don't know. Um, loon, six rue loon. Are these French words? 
French words. Okay. Fromage and something else was okay. <laughs> I wish I knew French. French. Um, I used to be a uh, camp counselor. Uh, kind of like it was weird. I was like a marketing director at this art gallery in the Hamptons in New York. It was amazing. But they had this uh, kids camp that came uh, in the summer. And so I was running some of that uh, as a counselor. And so one of my kids was like multilingual and she was trying to teach me French. And so she was like, you know, um, oh my gosh, tu marches, tu marches, you know, and um, je m'appelle and all this. I don't, I have no idea. I don't remember any of it. Um, but it was uh, impressive to me that this, this like five-year-old <laughs> was so bilingual to the point where she, she was trying to help me uh, learn some French. And so, I don't know, kids are amazing. You should watch, rewatch our uh, kids episode where the topic was kids. And then we, the one before that was babies. And that was fun. So as we set up Tango, which is my second, second most favorite game, um, I will say a little more about my husband, who is, again, a romantic. More specific, specifically, he's a potha romantic. Um, well, I w I, as, I guess I was wondering, like, how do I know then how he loves me? Um, and I just want to say, like, romantic attraction, sexual attraction, they don't really have anything to do with love. Um, like, I know my husband loves me. He tells me he loves me, but he shows me he loves me. I think that, um, especially when you're dealing with a partner who uh, is not aloe, um, you have to look at some of the other love languages outside of sex and touch um, to understand how that person is trying to express their love to you. So uh, my husband's love languages are, are definitely acts of service. Um, I'd say that's the primary one. Like he um, wakes up and goes to work, but beforehand I have my cup of tea. Like there's a song called I made you a cup of tea and I just it makes me think of him because he's always like thinking about me in the context of um, what do I need how can I be helped um, what does he need to do for the kids like I, I hear a lot of complaints about women who are like oh my husband I have to tell him to clean up after himself I have to tell him to put the seat down after I, I don't have to say shit to my husband he cooks um, he cleans the house I like on Saturdays, I don't have to lift a finger. He's coming in and he'll mop the floor and he sweeps. Um, he takes care of the baby for a very long time in our household. Um, I was the breadwinner and he was the one who stayed home with the kids. So he was just a, an amazing stay at home dad. Uh, now the roles have kind of flipped in the last few months and he's the one out working. And, you know, I've had to come into my, you know, housewifishness, which is. <laughs> very new to me because I'm still, you know, running my business. Um, but yeah, so, it, you know, I know my husband loves me. Um, but it's funny because for a very long time before I knew that he was uh, Arrow Ace, I used to actually question, though, like whether or not he actually liked me. Like, I'd be like, you know, I just feel like he he doesn't seem to like me. Like, he doesn't want to hold my hand. He doesn't seem to want to, um, you know, have sex unless it's an, a physical imperative to him, you know. Um, and then after understanding, okay, this, this is his sexual orientation, things really clicked for me that, oh my God, he actually really loves me because he gets over or sets aside some of his repulsions to express physical love to and with me. And so like, I don't know, it's just kind of a beautiful thing in the end, once we kind of got our diagnosis, if you want to call it that. Um, and so, yeah, I really appreciate him a lot more um, now that I know his sexual orientation. Um, not to say that it's without challenges or that knowing, you know, that he'll, you know, never, uh, I don't know, like be touchy feely with me. I think for a while, like I used to think, that um oh maybe he'll be more affectionate once i lose weight or maybe he'll be more affectionate once the kids aren't 
sleeping in the bed with us or, you know, whatever the case was. So it, there's a sadness in me that I, you know, that's, no, it's just never going to be a day that that happens. But it's also, again, a kind of a relief that I don't have to sit around and wait for something um, that if, you know, it hasn't happened in what, 10 years of being married, you know, that it's just not around the corner for us. And also that it's not my fault. It's not that I, you know, that I needed to do something or change myself, uh, you know, get a breast reduction or anything like he, he just has never cared, doesn't care about my appearance or about, you know, if I've put on makeup today or whatever the case is. And, you know, so it's one thing to be told that, but it's another thing to really fully embrace it and understand it. And so I think that's where we are in our relationship. And it's, it's really good. It's really, we're in a really good place. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's definitely possible if you're in a situation where you're aloe and you're um, dealing with somebody who is on the ace arrow spectrum. So yeah, don't, don't discount things, but I will say, you know, this might not be the type of relationship you want for your first time relationship. Uh, but yeah, I digress. Maybe I can talk about that in a little bit because I did um, see a Reddit post that was uh, posed an interesting question from a, a young woman who was in a relationship with a asexual person. So I'll talk about that after we play Tango. So <laughs> Tango is really becoming really fun for me. I thought it was really simple at first and now it's a little bit of a challenge. And again, the more challenging the logic puzzle, the more I like it. And again, feel free to interrupt me at any time, leave a comment, call into the phone number. Um, it's like just a Google number. So you can, you know, hopefully call from your Google voice if you are out, um, out of America and it won't charge you anything. So, or call from WhatsApp, but either way, um, tango is a puzzle where you can't have more than two symbols in a row. You have to have the, an even amount of symbols on each row and in each column. And if you see the X, you have to have different symbols. So either a sun or a moon. And if you have the equals, it has to be the same symbol on either side of that symbol. So since you can't have more than two in a row, I know that these have to be moons. Um, let's see. This has to be a sun and that has to be a sun because you can't have more than two in a row. Um, let's see. So I need another sun and a moon for this row and another sun and a moon for this row. Um, so nothing's really going to keep us off track. Let's see. Can't have a sun here, so that's got to be a moon. So now we have to have a sun here and a sun here. Have to have a moon there. Can't have more than two in a row. That has to be a moon here because that's equals. That has to be the opposite. That has to be the opposite. Uh, can't have more than two in a row. So there's a sun. There's a sun. Let's see if there's anything else we can kind of easily deduce. Um, now on this row, we need another sun and a moon. Or this column, sorry. Yeah, nothing really is jumping out, so let's look on this side. I love these moments when it's like, okay, now I have to really think because um, nothing's really making it making it easy for us right now. I like a challenge. <laughs> on this row, we need uh, two moons and a sun. Two moons in the sun. Let's see, we need two suns and a moon here. Interesting, yeah, we're not getting really much help. We need another sun and another moon. Goodness. Okay, this is really challenging. We might have to like do a brute force and just try it and see how it goes. <laughs> so if we um, need a sun and a moon, 
let's see if we put a moon here. Will we will we break it? And then we know if if not, then we have to come back and put a sun here. So if we put a moon here and a moon here, the rest of these have to be suns. So that has to be a moon and that has to be a moon. That works. Um, let's see, we can't have a, a moon here. That would have to be a sun. This has to be the opposite symbol. So that has to be the opposite symbol. So now we need a sun here. I think this might be the solution. <laughs> I think we guessed correctly. Um, let's see. So now we need a, a, ooh, no. Here we go. Look at this. We have three suns and we need three moons. So to have the other two moons be here and here, we would break the puzzle. So we know these cannot be moons. So let's undo and make this guy, whoop, sorry. Let's make this guy a sun which means this is equal, so that's the sun. Can't have more than three in a row, so that's a moon. Opposite symbol, opposite symbol. Um, let's see. So we have the three suns here, we need three moons, so these have to be moons. Um, let's see what we can figure out now. We need a sun and a moon. Oh, can't have more than uh, two in a row, so that has to be a sun. Same here, that has to be a moon. Uh, this row has three moons, so we need another sun. Oh, what a wonderful challenge this one was. Have a sun here and a moon here. Uh, we need another moon for this one, and our final one will be a sun. What a fun tango! That was really, really fun. I haven't had to do like a brute force where we try one thing and then undo if it's wrong before on this puzzle. So that was a really, really fun one. All right, great. So let's set up our favorite <laughs> puzzle queens. And I'll tell you about a Reddit post I saw. Um, I follow, uh, you know, our a asexuality, our aromanticism, our intersex, our trans, like I love our MTF, our FTM. <laughs> I love, like, I'm such a, like, vanilla person. I'm pansexual, but I'm such a vanilla person. But I like to, you know, understand what's going on in different types of communities, especially because I teach people how to talk to each other about sex and sexuality. So I like to know about the different um, ins and outs of those worlds as best I can. Um, so I was in a, a uh, subreddit about asexuality and I saw a post from an aloe again a traditionally sexually attract attracted person um, who was in a relationship for about six months with a person who they kind of discovered was asexual and she was like oh shit you know I really love them and I, I you know but when we went to have sex we had sex once and then they just expressed that they just didn't like it and they didn't want to do it again and, and they think they're asexual and um you know but i really love them and i want to make this work and so maybe i can be asexual um and and we can be together and i was like oh baby <laughs> you know oh, oh baby i think they, that they were like 19 or very young and i was like sweetheart listen like i'm um i'm in your position 15 years into the future okay and I'm very much in love with my husband. We have a beautiful relationship, but the challenges that his asexuality have presented and and even will present for us are only surmountable because I have experience with other relationships, traditional relationships, and a long enough experience with him to know how to handle those things. Plus we've built our relationship again over 14 years to the point where, you know, we're such a tight knit team that we can handle the challenges that his asexuality is presenting together. Um, I was like, if you if this is your first relationship, you know, if you, if you haven't had the, the, the education of, of a, a traditional type of 
relationship, then you're going to do yourself a disservice by denying your your sexual needs because you it, you can't force yourself to be asexual. Again, it's a sexual orientation. It's not um, something that he's choosing. And so, you know, you can't force yourself to be celibate um, or you can be celibate, but you're going to end up resenting him as opposed to understanding him and it's just not worth it because at the same time he might begin to resent you because you're going to continually present needs that he cannot fulfill i'd say you're you're you know by all means don't listen to me go forth and do whatever you want but just to take my advice i would get out of that relationship um, only be, because if you give yourself time to have traditional relationships, try uh, moving forward with other people, live your life, and then sometime in the future, if you come back together with this person and you're like, no, that was the love of my life, and now I, I know for a fact this is something I can do, you know, then, then okay, then, okay, go for, go ahead and give that a shot. But I don't think anybody should again, force themselves to mold into an orientation that they're not. In the same way, like I would tell people who are gay, like get out of the closet, please, please come out. You know, like it's a sexual orientation. Um, you can't force yourself. <laughs> There's no um, conversion therapy for homosexuality so that, that works. Um, so, you know, don't think that there's anything you can do to change his or change your own. And so that's, that was my advice. I don't know if they heard it or took it, but you know, if, if you're in that situation, again, I would say if you haven't had, you know, if you haven't lived your life, if you, if you haven't had the experience or, or built that relationship with that person um, on a foundation of understanding your own needs and your own body and your own wants and how you can best fulfill those, then, then yeah, I'd say move on, you know, I don't, I don't foresee myself <laughs> moving on from my husband anytime soon. I love him very much. Um, I feel like we, again, have the tools that we've built individually from individual relationships we've had and together over the past 14 years to manage, again, some of the challenges that are presented from his uh, arrow aceness. But yeah, I just don't think that that without those tools, we'd be able to make it. And so that was my piece of advice. And that is my piece of advice if that's your situation. So if you feel differently, let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts on being in an aloe ace uh, relationship or an aloe arrow relationship or an aloe arrow ace relationship like me. <laughs> um, there's actually a podcast somebody recommended called um, aloe ace, I think aloe arrow i'm gonna look it up and see um because it's something i'm very interested to again know other people's experiences especially if it's uh similar to mine or if they have advice on again how to overcome some of those challenges that are very real um but yeah so that's my kind of final thought on on um i guess advice for the aloe arrow couple but <laughs> let's move on Again, feel free to give me a call or leave a comment if you have any thoughts on um, anything I've discussed, on any of the topics listed above. Definitely not trying to have a debate with you. I'm not an arguer. I'm not one who likes contention or, uh, you know, trying to convince you of anything. I definitely just really want to understand um, if you're on my side of the issue or if you have a differing opinion, like, how did you come to that place? Um, you know, if we could investigate and, and, and dig into some of the facts that led you to think what you think, let's do it. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and move on to our final LinkedIn puzzle, which is Queens. Now, this is a, a puzzle based on what's called star battle puzzles, which are uh, where you have to find a certain number of um, objects in each row, column, or um, colored shapes, so just to show you. So this one is, looks extremely simple. Um, 
so here we're trying to find in a what seven by seven region um, crowns in this case um, they cannot touch each other and you have to have one per row and column so once we find those we can get rid of those we know there has to be one in this row so there can't be anything else in this row except for yellow we can't have one here because if we did have a crown there we couldn't have any gray because you can't have anything touching it have to have one here because it's the only place for it to go so let's take away everything around it because they can't touch and everything in its column and in its row that leaves our purple everything around it's gone let's take away everything in that row and in that column so that leaves that the orange can only be in this column so there can't be anything else in that column so that means the yellow is here take away everything else in its column so that means that the gray can only be in this column so nothing else but gray can be in this column so we can take away that green um, it also means that we can't have a crown here because that would eliminate uh, our gray because we can't have anything around it so the gray the green crown is here the gray crown is here can't have anything else in that row so there's our final crown in orange that was super easy super super duper easy um, but still very enjoyable. I love, love, love these puzzles. So again, like we've already had 389 people comment, <laughs> just comment. It's like 6.30 in the morning in America. So this is uh, probably the UK crowd like me uh, that's already finished their puzzles. So that's all four of our LinkedIn puzzles. Um, baby day is still fast asleep. So maybe we can get a couple of star battles in, which are basically, again, just queens. Um, so let's set that up. We can do a couple of one stars because those are very similar to what you'll get from Queens. Um, and just as a kind of a final thought on a romanticism, especially in the context of uh, my relationship with my aromantic asexual husband. Um, again, he's a romantic to be very specific, meaning he's got um, he's a romance repulsed. Um, and he is uh, gray sexual, meaning that he only experiences sexual attraction sometimes, like occasionally. Um, so that's uh, that. He also might be what's called demisexual, where he has to have a, a emotional connection with someone before he can feel sexual attraction. So he's somewhere in there <laughs> on the asexuality spectrum. So again, just in celebration of asexual awareness week that's why i wanted to kind of talk about these more maybe personal issues um because they are very pertinent to me and i i for once feel happy to have a personal uh experience that i can share because a lot of the things that i talk about are based on my research or interviewing people or just things i've learned from my friends because i'm not trans i'm not non-binary um i'm a very vanilla cis person um, I just learned that I'm actually considered intersex to some people because I have PCOS and I experience um, some of those masculine secondary sex characteristics like facial hair and things like that so that's exciting but otherwise I'm pretty pretty plain old me so um, yeah to be able to share my personal experiences around aromanticism is, is new and different so thank you for listening and for understanding and again, my final thought before we move into just playing around with some uh, star battles, it's just that, um, you know, we have a five-year-old and we have a new baby and I'm noticing how my husband's aromanticism sneaks into um, his parenting. And so I feel like I have to almost teach him how to inject romance into his relationship with his five-year-old daughter that sounds horrible <laughs> but what I mean okay it's like she'll we were walking home from school the other day and he he wasn't um working that day so we're all we all got to walk home from school and she went to hold his hand and she was just holding his hand like he wasn't holding her hand back so I'm like Chris Chris 
hold her, hold her hand, hold her hand. And he's like, fine, okay, fine. And so he holds her hand. Um, the other day they were just playing around. She was, um, she was like doing a little dance. And um, she was like, dance with me, daddy. And, you know, he's like, uh, I'm like, get up, just dance with your daughter, dance with. It's like little stuff like that. I'm like, he, he just, it's just not in him <laughs> to, to have these, like, what, what I would say are really, um, you know, sweet moments with his kid. Because he, because he, he's so air romantic, like he doesn't even, it's not in him to see that, you know, that's what his little girl needs from him. And so. You know, it's interesting. I have to almost like teach him the moments to take advantage of, you know, to um, to to create those little cute little moments for her to remember and for her to embrace and for her to know what to look for in relationships with um, with men and how she should be treated because, um, you know, he just doesn't know. And so it's just interesting how, <laughs> you know, again, you have to even think about the the romance issue in all kinds of relationships and so it's it's neat but uh yeah he's doing a good job <laughs> all right so let's move into some star battles and again feel free to interrupt at any time i would love your thoughts and opinions um i'd love to hear your experiences your challenges um your orientations if you're aloe if you're arrow if you're ace if you're Demi, if you're Cupio, if you're Koi, if you're any of these things, um, yeah, let me know. Otherwise, again, let's just have some fun and do a couple of star battles. Um, let's start with some one stars. We can just go for a bit until baby girl wakes up. And um, again, one stars are very similar to what you get in Queens or in LinkedIn. So some of the rules that apply for uh, one stars apply for any star. So whether you're looking for two stars, three stars, four stars, or even five stars, um, you can see things like we're in the top two rows uh, here. They only It only contains two colors. So any of the colors outside of these two rows cannot have a star because you have to have one star per color, per row, per column. So we can auto automatically eliminate all of this stuff here. Not this guy, sorry. And so that's a really nice like kind of help to get started. Um, now this one's interesting because one in the first four columns, you have one, two, three, four colors, but then you have this guy right here. It's got five colors. Um, so we can't, even though it's so close, we can't, look at this one as a solid set just yet um let's see if there's any other places we can start kind of chunking down again that's the uh, official word is chunking <laughs> it's probably not um one thing i noticed is that on this row after we did those eliminations we only have pink left in this row right here so that means that we can't have pink anywhere else the same principle because if you have um, one star per row and there's only pink there, you can't have that star anywhere else in this pink. So that leaves our green as our first star because it's the only one left on this row. So we take away everything around it, everything in the row, everything in the column, um, and everything else in the green since we have accounted for that shape. So that leaves our red star here. So we can take away everything around it, everything in its row, everything in its column uh, that leaves our pink star here take away everything around it everything in its row everything in its column um, that leaves that the blue can only be in this row so everything else around it can go these two and then everything else in the blue outside of that can go that leaves brown as our star here so everything around it, everything in the row and column can go. That leaves our yellow. That leaves our orange. That leaves our dark blue. Sorry, I didn't get rid of those. 
leaves our dark blue. That leaves our light blue. That leaves our gray. That leaves our final one, our purple. That was pretty easy. Yeah, the one stars are just <laughs> kind of fly through them pretty easy. Even, even saying that though, look at that, we're <laughs> on the slow side of things. So let's uh, take some of the rules we learned. Sorry, my dogs are playing. I have three puppies. <laughs> They're all right here just playing with each other. It's probably a little loud. Um, so if that's what you're hearing, that's what that is. Look at the average time on this one, goodness. And um, the record is 38 seconds, but the average is pretty high. So this one might be a little bit challenging. Let's see. Are you guys done? I have a, a Sharpay mix named Lottie Da because she's missing an eye. So like Slick Rick, Lottie Dottie, we like to work. So she's accosting my miniature schnauzer whose name is Queenie. All this while my Great Danes looking on from the Ottoman. Okay. I think they've relaxed a little. <laughs> They're silly. All right. So <laughs> we know right away. Let's just look at the easy friend here. He's only uh, going to be in these two columns, the brown. Oh. And then um, so we can take away everything else in its column. And my husband just texts me. He like, I know he loves me. He just always checks in during the day and he's just, he's a sweetie pie. He's so sweet. So this brown has to be here or here. So there can't be anything around it or on the sides of it because it would eliminate the brown. Um, we can't have anything else in this row because the lavender is only in this row or the violet. I don't know. Um, because this little blue shape is now, the dark blue shape is just these three. It's like a little mini L. So we can't have one here. So that's already taken care of. But we also can't have one here or here because that would eliminate uh, the whole thing if we had stars there or there. Um, let's see if there's any other ones like that that we can kind of chunk, chunk down. Um, I see right away that in the first three columns, we have three shapes. So any of the colors and those shapes outside of these first three columns can go. All right. So that can go. So that means the red can only be in this column. So not only can we take away everything in the red outside of that column, but if it can only go here or here, we can't have a star here because it would eliminate both of the possibilities for the red. Um, that leaves our first star, our purple star. So that takes care of the purple and that whole column. Um, so the green or the blue could be here or here. Um, let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So in the bottom four rows, we have four colors. One, two, three, four. So these colors can't be outside of the bottom four rows. So we can take all of that away. Uh, that leaves nothing, <laughs> nothing helpful. Um, let's see. Again, I'm listening. I don't think you can hear it. I hope you can't because I don't want any copyright violations, but I have a Deep House remix channel on YouTube going and it is really great. So if you like house music, highly recommend. This column is solved because we only have one space, which is that dark blue. So we could take away the everything around it, the rest of that dark blue, the rest of that row. Uh, and that column was done. So now our brown is there. Take away every oops, take away everything around it everything in that row and everything in that column that leaves our orange here take away the orange everything around it everything in that row and column um so yeah this is tracking um 
remember we can't have one here whenever we have a little a little tiny L uh, we can't have anything on the corners because that would get rid of it so that means the blue has to be here so there cannot be pink in this row so that means that the pink has to be in this column so we can't have anything else in that column uh, the green is good let's see so the yellow is only in this row so everything else in that yellow can go so that leaves our green as only being in this row so everything around it can go that leaves our pink that leaves our red that takes away that gray from that pink star here's our gray star there's our yellow star and finally there's our light blue star how do we do that wasn't too bad you guys look at that we're off the charts very fast 282 seconds great oh, girl my back is killing me but look at that there's um 38 seconds is the winner there's a lot of people have solved this and I, the average is still very high so somebody must have like left it for like a whole day <laughs> or something and that's why it, it just chunked everything up for them um let's do one more one star and then we can maybe move on to a two or three star if you're feeling uh randy i guess <laughs> all right in the first three columns i see that we have three complete shapes so it's kind of a reverse of the color rule so if you um see the three shapes here th then there has to be a star within these shapes so we know that everything outside of those shapes in these first three columns can go hi Hey, get a little hot. Okay. Oh, she's hot. Got a little toasty. Yeah, it's okay. All right. So that leaves our pink star here. Take away everything around it, everything in its row, everything in its column and everything else in the pink since that shape is accounted for that leaves our orange in this column as the only place it can go so everything else in that column can go that leaves our dark blue take away everything around it everything in its row everything in its column that leaves our red take away everything around it everything in its row everything in its column that leaves our yellow everything around it everything in its row everything in its column um let's see what else we can do so the green can only be here that means that we can take away everything else in its row and the ones here and here because if we had stars here it would eliminate the green totally oh let's see so oh hey baby hey baby Baby. All right. So I'm going to count my shapes a bit. So one, two, three. So one, two, three. In the top three rows, we have three colors. So anything in those colors um, can't be outside of those rows. So we cannot have a blue there that leaves our blue here our blue star light blue star here take away everything in its row everything in its column everything around it that leaves our green take away everything around it everything in its row everything in its column that leaves our gray everything around it everything in its row everything in its column that leaves our orange leaves our brown leaves our purple That was very fast, you guys. You see your puppies? You see your puppies? Okay. Hey, hey, 
A, A, Douglas, Douglas, Lottie, Douglas. Stop it. They're crazy. Alrighty. You okay? Alright, let's hit a two star just for funsies. <laughs> well, this one is waking up. You want some more? You want this? No. No. <laughs> Here. Take this. Relax. You okay? She just had a diaper change, big old bottle. We're gonna have some apples later, but um, yes. Yeah, so she's just not sleep. She's not sleeping kind of all day like she did when she was a little little baby. But uh, that's all right. <laughs> You're okay. You can see what I'm doing? So let's do a two star and then we'll hang it up for the day. So I can hang out with my day. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so the same rules apply no matter how many stars you're looking for. So in the first three columns, we only have three colors. So everything that is that color outside of the first three columns can go. So all of that can go, that can go. This um, is only in this column. So everything in the gray, that's not gray in that column can go. Now the cool thing with two stars is that whenever you have a three by anything, you can just take away the middle. So if you have a three by three, you can take away the middle. If you have a three by two, you can take away both the middles. So that means the star is either here, can't have anything around it, or here, can't have anything around it. So that leaves this as a, a four by one. So you have a star here and a star here, definitely. So you can't have anything on either side of that. You okay? Um, for the dark blue, if you have a star here or not, you have at least one star in this three section so you can't have a star here or here. You're crazy. Um, you can't have a star here because if you eliminated all of this, you would not be able to put two stars in the orange. Um, let's see where we've got some fun things like that. Uh, okay, in the bottom four rows, we have four complete shapes, the red, dark blue, green, and um, brown. So anything that's not those shapes can be taken away from that bottom four rows. So that leaves our gray as our first set of stars because we have a three by. So three by one, you can take away that middle. So that leaves these two as the stars. So we can take away everything else in that row, all that around it. All right, so that leaves that the yellow star has to be here because if we look at the two by two sections, you can't, since the stars can't touch, you can only have one star in any given two by two region. Um, so same here. Uh, there's a star here. There's definitely a star here. So that first green is accounted for. Um, same here. You got a two by two and then you got this one here. So that's got to be the brown star there, which leaves our second green star here. So now we have a two by two here and a two by two here. So there's definitely a star here, definitely a star here for the dark blue. So it can't have stars here because that would eliminate those. And now in this column, we have one star, two star. Because again, you have to have two stars per shape, per row, per column. Why are you guys so loud? Girls. So the bottom row is done it's taken care of and now we have a two by three and a, a three by anything again take away the middle so we know the star is here for the red you okay you hear your puppies 
I hear your puppies. So now we have a two by three here. We can take away the middle. That leaves the light blue star here. Hi. Oh, you looking at? So this row has uh, one more star here. Take away everything around it. We can't have a star here because if we did, we wouldn't have enough room to put two stars in the orange. <laughs> okay. All right. We definitely have a star here. So that means our second star for the is gonna be in the pink here. Um, so we can't have a star here because it would eliminate this entire section. Um, that means there's only one star here um, which tracks because in this set of two columns, we are looking for four stars all together and there would be one here, three, two, three, and then four would be here. So um, let's see, let's apply that same rule for these two rows. So we have one, two, three. So there's only one star in between all of this uh, orange and purple, but there's really no way to tell. So let's just keep looking. Oh, here we go. Second star for that row and for that dark blue. Um, hey you. you okay? Um, so we have a, our first star for the purple. What? Are you okay? Hey! <laughs> Hi! Yeah. You okay? You waking up? Um, in this column, we only have orange left, so we can't have any orange outside of that column. You okay? You're waking up. You're waking up. Good morning. Are you fully awake now? She's up, up, up. We're going to play around in a second. She had a physio appointment. Um last week and so we were taught um, some cool new sitting up tricks so we're gonna work on that all right so the two stars in this column are found and now we have a two by three and again three by anything in this yellow means the middle can go so that leaves this is our first star for the yellow this is our second star for the yellow so we can't have anything there so since the second star for the purple has to be here or here. We can't have a star here because it would eliminate both of those. Um, let's see. This uh, column is complete. It's got two stars. So our second yellow and second star for that column is here. So the second star for this column is here. That row is complete. And now we have a three by one. So the middle can go and the stars are there for the orange. This row is complete. The pink stars have to be here and here. This column is complete. This row is complete. This row is complete. And our final star for the puzzle has to be here. Well done. That was a fun two by two. Yeah. You have fun? I think we can sneak in one more before she's like fully uh, at phase three awakeness. Look, that was very fast. Oh, we're gonna get some raspberries. <laughs> this is like teeth sucky thing. So funny. Um, and again, at any point, if you wanna call in and chat about any of these things or just um, talk about puzzles, talk about a romanticism, talk about uh, being an allosexual. I am here to chit chat. Even though it's so early in the morning, it's like almost 7 a.m. in America. So I get it if it's just not happening. That's why again, we try to choose a topic to talk about. And so again, it's Asexual Awareness Week. Um, so we were picking asexual related topics to talk about. So that's uh, what we do. That's what I do. And just to recap again, 
we'll hit one more two by uh, two star puzzle. Um, but my name is Sophie of sexwithsophie.com and I teach people how to talk to each other about sex and sexuality. Yeah, so that's what I do. So let's sneak in one more puzzle. And then we're gonna see if we can find one that's a little more challenging. And we're gonna sign off for the for the day. All right, so let's see. In the first four rows, ooh, we have four colors, but then we have this guy sneaking in. So there's five colors, so we can't look at that as a good starting point. I'd say in this last two columns, we have two complete shapes. So anything that's in those columns that's not these shapes can go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five shapes are solidly within the bottom five rows. So everything outside of that can go. Um, so now <laughs> we have, okay. All right, so now we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now we have four shapes solidly within these four columns. So everything outside of those shapes can go. Um, that's kind of tricky. We haven't seen that before. Hi, darling. So this is a three by three. Uh, there's red shapes within these three by three cells. And so Again, whenever you have a three by anything, the middle can go, so that can go. Lottie da, Lottie. She's so pretty. So this one, the purple, we can look at in two by two cells. So two by two here, so there can't be one there. And a two by two here, so there can't be anything here. Um, fucking dogs, man. I have a love-hate relationship with my dogs. Like, I love my dogs, but the process of bringing them to, to England was so stressful. Like, I've, I've miscarried. I've been fired, like, twice. I've, I've had some pretty shitty days. And, and yet the worst day of my life <laughs> was bringing these fucking dogs from America to England. So I'm, you know, I'm a little over them, but, and this was like almost three years ago now, and it's still, it's traumatic. <clears throat> so yeah, love-hate relationship with these dogs. So in the first four columns, we um, we talked about these, for, these four shapes. <laughs> But in this column, we have uh, where if we had one or two stars here, whether we had one here or not, we'd have to mark that out because we definitely have at least one star here. You okay? Where are you going? <laughs> You're so cute. You're so happy. Oh, I love you, Boo Bearish. All right, and so, oh my gosh. Why, why, there's nothing happening. Like, I appreciate that they're like, we're protecting you, mom, there's something out here, you know, there's nothing out there. Um, with this pink shape, if we look at this two by two region, uh, we can only get one star in there. So that means that there has to be at least the second star or both stars in this C section, C section. So you can't have a star here. So now, um, let's see if we can start doing some counting. <laughs> they are just crazy. So you have to have two stars here. <laughs> I'm probably gonna go just because they're 
You're gonna break somebody's eardrum. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Douglas! Douglas! My Great Dane. Great Dane Mix. She's crazy. Yes, she's a girl named Douglas. If you've seen the movie Up, the movie Up, that dog Doug, that's her. It's like she'll be just chilling, looking at you, and then squirrel. So we had to name her after that, sweetie pie. Um, okay, so this shape has two stars, definitely. This shape has two stars, but um, if we look at the two by two cells, there could be one here, there could be one here. So we don't know if it's the red or the blue. So we still have to kind of maintain that there could be uh, a star here. So let's see. Baby. Um, same for this one. If we have we have one star here, one star here for sure, one star here for sure. So there are three that are accounted for. You okay? Um, so there could be one star here or one star here. So we're still not necessarily being helped. There you go. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. So in this one, let's look at this row. There's uh, only two spaces where stars can be here and here. And so we know there cannot be stars here because that would eliminate this area. And then there has to be a star here. So the first dark blue star is accounted for, and so is the green. So we can't have a star here, because that would take away all of these cells, and we know that the second star for the green has to go here. All right, and so since there is one star here, we can't have two orange in this column, so there has to be the second orange star here. So it leaves the first orange star here. Now orange and this whole column is taken care of. That means that the second blue star has to be here. So we can take that away. And now we have a two by three. So I think we're gonna be flying here from here on out, guys, hopefully. Um, we know there's a star here. So one, two, if there's this two by section here, there's at least one here. Let's look at this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there's one, two. Yeah, we're not getting much help. Now this one is a three by two. So in this three by two section, we have uh, the purple here. So the middle can go. That leaves the stars for purple here and here. That means the second star for this row has to be here. So we can eliminate these cells because it has to be within one of these three. The second star for this row has to be either here or here, so we can take this one away. So now that's, this column leaves this star and this star. This row is complete. This row is a three by one, so the middle can go. So that and that are where the stars go there. This column is done. This column is done. So there's a star here and a star here. Uh, the green, we know there's a star here and then there's one here, so there can't be one there. Second dark blue is here. Uh, let's see, this one can go because we can't have any stars touching. So the second green is here, second red is here. This row is taken care of. That one is the brown. Yeah, this whole bottom row is taken care of. Second brown, second gray. Yeah. The second yellow is going to be in here. Second gray is going to be in here. So the first gray has to be here. So this row is done. There's our second pink. I say gray. Pink. And our final star of the puzzle. This was a really challenging one. How fun was that? 
How fun was that, baby? Did you have... Oh, you want to pet Dougie? You want to pet Dougie? Hey, Dougie. Oh, look at that. We were very... Ah, don't lick her, Dougie. That was very fast. Very, very good. That was fun. So she... <laughs> better talk. So, yeah, that was really fun. Thanks for hanging out and doing some star battles with me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now that Day is fully awake, she has achieved phase three awakeness. We're going to eat some apples and strawberries and practice our sitting up techniques. <laughs> oh, that got really bright. But, um, yeah, we'll come back tomorrow for our uh, next LinkedIn puzzle games for tomorrow. And I think we're going to just get into some of these like nuances in the uh, asexuality spectrum so we could talk a little bit about that. So tomorrow uh, will probably be, um, I think we'll talk about agender tomorrow and then maybe on Wednesday we'll talk about coy sexual, cupio sexual, all those kind of, again, nuanced ones. So stick around, follow so you can, you know, hang out and hear what we get say and chime in please whenever you feel um i will post some of these uh little clips so if you again have thoughts and comments you can wait for those and write on there when it's a more appropriate hour and not seven in the morning so um for now signing out we love you guys thanks for hanging out and say bye say bye bye <laughs>